know, obviously we've got loads of flowers in the garden and one of the flowers they really love is this stuff, lungwort. So if you grow lungwort in your garden, and because these are quite common bees, certainly in southern England anyway, um, they love this stuff. It has these little spotty leaves on and the blue and purple flowers. And there's one already. The males just patrol around them at vast speed, whizzing around the flowers, looking for the females. And what they do is the male will, when he sees a female, he will just hover behind her uh, for quite a while often, moving along, and then he'll suddenly jump onto her. And they're called hairy-footed flower bees because the male, when he actually, when he's actually mating with a female, he waves his wavy, uh, waves his uh, hairy legs around like this and just flaps them up and down. No one knows exactly why he does that, but it's probably, it may be some, something to do with putting a pheromone scent onto the female's antennae. That's one theory. So here's one of the females from the cob bricks and she's, I think it's the blue pink one. And she's feeding on this lithodora, these lovely blue flowers. They really like blue flowers. There she's on the lungwort, buzzing around. She's just collecting nectar at the moment, although she has got a load of pollen as well. So that one is blue. Is it green? You see, they've got very long tongues as well. And they use these to probe really deep into the flowers and they can access all sorts of flowers, but they certainly have favorites and lungwort is their favorite. Uh, Lithodora they like, and also they go on grape hyacinth and things like that as well, they, but they really like blue flowers. When I designed our garden here with all these little flower beds in, I made sure that I put a lot of sand and gravel into the, into the soil, and this provides a really good site for these mining bees to nest in. So we can see a little uh, nomad bee there coming in, but I've got a little colony of grey mining bees. Uh, we'll try and catch one in a minute. These are, they're called mining bees. Obviously they burrow under the ground and often the only sign you, you notice that they're around is little, like a little volcano appearing. There's one just here. See where the bee can excavate. Sometimes they can go up to a meter underground. These ones are probably going 30 centimeters or so under the ground and they'll make little nest cells in here. There's one there. Let's have a look and catch it. <laughs> They're quite fast. There we go. This is, a lot of the solitary bees are quite tricky to identify, but this is one of the easy ones. Um, and I know some of the some of the solitary bees can sting you. Leaf cutter bees do, but these mining bees don't. So, and they're rather stunning. This is a, a beautiful grey mining mining bee. You can see these often in cities. There's a big colony in the middle of Exeter, actually, on one of the on one of the little uh, bits of grass in the set in the city centre. And they've got a very distinctive black, shiny black body. But then the the, the thorax has got these pale bands of grey hairs around and they've got a little black face there too. So I'll let that one go, there she goes. And at the moment we've just got seen some nomad bees, which are actually cuckoo bees, because uh, although there are you know, 280 odd species of bee in Britain, about a quarter of them don't actually make a nest themselves. They actually just, they're cuckoos in other bees' nests. So this particular one, it looks like a little wasp, actually goes into a, a mining bees burrow and the female of this bee will lay her egg in the mining bee burrow, and see one there. And then the larva of the nomad bee will eat the egg or the larva of the, the host bee and then eat all its food. So it's just a, a cheating way of doing it really. It's a, a cuckoo in the nest of the solitary bee.